And I wanted to make a film that people would not be able to deny it. A mental health awareness and, um, you know, developing your own self-confidence and self-love is not something that is involved in our culture. Rape is a crime. You're not embarrassed if you get hit by a car, are you? You're not embarrassed if you get stabbed, are you? No. So you shouldn't be embarrassed about this too. Welcome yeah. to the Quaint. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Hearty congratulations on winning the Gold Remy Award for Direction at the Houston International Film Festival. And um, your film also won the Best Mid-Length Feature Film at the New York City Independent Film Festival. Yes. So <laughs> what does this win mean for you? Well, um, honestly, see, I, I don't come from um, a line of filmmakers per se. And um, like I kind of switch professions because I'm actually a doctor. So whenever I get any kind of, you know, acclaimed awards or any kind of recognition, it helps me kind of reinstill faith that I chose the right job, you know? So it may be a weird thing, but that's what I first think. I'm like, ah, oh, I did the right thing. Because right. what happens is, especially with how we're raised, you know, they always, you know, our culture puts us in a box where we have to do particular things. And when you step out of that box and you don't know if it's going to work or not, looks like the, your entire life, you kind of search for reasons to say, okay, I didn't make a mistake. You know, I didn't make a mistake. Oh, I think it's okay. <laughs> I didn't make a mistake. <laughs> it is very simplistic, you know? And the second thing is, I'm really happy with it because, of course, it's a joy of, you know, uh, the joy that I had making the film. And, you know, I'm happy that it's being appreciated and it does have an impact because it's exactly why I did it. But even more than that, um, I like it when I get awards like this and recognition like this, because then it goes to show other people that they can do it, too. You know, since we're talking about your film, what what was the thought behind, you know, uh, when the music changes? Oh, uh, so uh, um, multi-layered, actually. It thought kind of started off on kind of a personal note because uh, of, um, you know, I, I had an ex-boyfriend who would never pick up the phone, right? <laughs> Just want to pick up the phone. <laughs> so one day I thought that, you know, you say all these things, you don't pick up the phone. What if something serious were to happen and you didn't pick up the phone, right? So it was Absolutely. a simplistic thought that kind of spiraled into, you know, storyteller in me, it made it spiral into different things. But then later on, the reason why I, it becomes a story, I like writing things that people can really relate with. So this not picking up the phone, whether you're a man or a woman, you know, they're just people like that, you know, who don't respond in particular, you know, for the most part, you know, they kind of take people for granted. Um, I saw that it was so you know, common, like it prevailed all the time. And I'm like, you know what, I want to talk about that. Like when you just take people for granted, you see people pick up the phone from certain people and other people, they don't answer. You know, there are two types of individuals, the type of individual who sees his mother calling and doesn't answer the phone. Another person who sees his mother calling and immediately answers the phone no matter what. The two types of people that are there, you know? So that was an interesting quotient for me, you know, picking up the phone. Right. But then another thing was, you know, with what I was seeing around here and our safe, uh, safety issues and the amount of you know um, assault on varying degrees that we always have to deal with, and um, and it's every day, it's all day, mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I wanted to be able to talk about that, and you know about the different aspects that are involved in that, and the honor quotient, of course. And I wanted to make a film that people would not be able to deny. It. That makes sense because now because we have so much of media at least with the rape cases and assault cases you read about a few stories every day every single day so now you know it's spread all over social media so i landed up seeing a lot of people when they would open up their social media they open up and they're like oh not again oh not again and i don't want these negative vibes and then i started thinking man negative vibes this is like life that's happening here but it's so much that people don't even want to look at it and it was being easy, it was easy enough for them to just close their eyes and ignore as if nothing happened. So I wanted to make a film where no matter how many times you close your eyes or you try and cover your ears, it's still there. Uh, in the film, uh, your character is subjected to misogyny and rape. 
Yes. But uh, as I watched the film, a question arose that why did it take an act of rape um, for her to realize that, you know, uh, realize the truth about her boyfriend when he has been pretty much projected as a misogynist, a bit of a narcissist from the very beginning. <laughs> That's why, because um, it's very simple. Um, I've seen the, the narcissistic, misogynistic sort of male plenty. And it's so common around you. And you don't actually have labels or brands for them because that's just what it is, right? You know? Exactly. And then people will always ask them, why is she with him? Isn't she a smart, capable, independent woman? A woman. And then I always say, yeah, she's smart, but she's stupid. And that's life. Half of the time, you don't know why you're there. And that's life. You make up excuses for your spouse. And that's life. You know? You, there are so many chances for so many of us to walk out and we don't, mm -hmm. that's life. But unfortunately sometimes, and this is just the truth, it takes an extreme circumstance for us to be able to take a decision. It's sad, but true, you know, it's really sad, but it's true. Yeah, that's true. Actually, yes, you know, in fact, that scene where, um, you know, Kiki sends her the video and she goes through it yeah. while sitting in the auto, yeah. it actually, I, I thought at that point, it would probably be a moment of revelation for her that, <laughs> This is it. You know, I can see the truth in front of me and maybe this is the time I take a call. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like you said, you know, often, you know, victims of abuse get drawn into um, yeah, toxic relationships yeah. and not be able to escape it. Point blank uh, abuse. That's the thing. See, we're not taught that the things that he does is abuse. Because it's so part of our culture. Oh, he's just, he's caring. He may be a little irresponsible, but he's still caring. You know what I mean? So for a mass majority, he's not a bad man. Right. He's not the best, may not be the best, but you know, at least he's not beating you up. Right? right. So if he doesn't beat you up, he's got to be nice. Right? Right. Right. So, so that's the thing. We don't know because no one puts any, uh, you know, does no one teaches us that aspect, you know, mental health awareness and, um, you know, developing your own self-confidence and self-love is not something that is involved in our culture. You know, we're always taught like beaten down with a stick and taught to obey. And, you know, the attitude of servitude is so heavy, you know, that you get into, especially with women, we get put in this sort of trap where you're always guilty and you always feel like, you know, you've got to save it and you've got to nurture it and everything will always work out. And more often than not, it doesn't work out mm -hmm. because the other person doesn't understand, you know, and unfortunately our environment doesn't put them like in a, in a chokehold where they have to understand, you know, I remember there was a very prominent person. I don't want to use any names, but then who saw the film and a, uh, you know, uh, and then he said, uh, he, um, he had said that um, uh, it, uh, it for him, he didn't understand what the big problem was. <laughs> As in, you know, yeah, so the boy's a little irresponsible and all of that, but then, and he's just trying to take care of her. And it was very heartfelt from him. He doesn't, he didn't understand. He wasn't trying to be malicious. He just didn't get it. And then I, rem I looked at it and I was like, wow. You know, just like, wow. And so that does happen, you know, like it's like this magnanimous offer. Even if this happens to you, I will take care of you. You know, I will be, even though this happened to you, I'm still there with you. Rape is a crime. You're not embarrassed if you get hit by a car, are you? You're not embarrassed if you get stabbed, are you? No. So you shouldn't be embarrassed about this too. Curious to know, how have women received the film? It's been tough on them only um, solely because, and it's so sad for me to say this out loud, but there's not one household in our country where a woman doesn't have one story. You know what I mean? Like there's not one, I mean, go ask your mom, ask your aunt, ask your grandmother, you know? Everyone has at least a couple of stories on some varying level. So it's so relative to them that that saddens me. I mean, in one way I like it because, you know, maybe it'll wake them up. But in the other way, it's just sad, you know, and they get so traumatized and then, you know, it, uh, it's, it's harsh on them. You've acted, directed and produced the film. Yes. What was it like juggling on three roles? And do you think you were partial to any one of the roles a little bit more than the other two? 
Uh, well, um, hmm. uh, so the, okay. Uh, I enjoy being an actor director. I genuinely do. I think it's a niche that, you know, it's kind of my thing, you know, so I like it. I really <laughs> do. But um, acting, um, having said that, is um, the easier part. Genuinely the easy part, which is weird for me to say after you see the film because, you know, it's heavy and nuanced and all that. Genuinely, it, I mean, that was the first craft out of everything that I knew that I could do. I didn't know anything else, you know, and I didn't even know anything about films, you know. So the first and foremost thing that I did was acting. So right. that was the part that, you know, I, I kind of had a hold on. Um, then, of course, came the writing and then the directing, which I genuinely enjoy. So it's kind of a step by step sort of procedure. So once you get the writing out of the way, then the writer kind of takes a back seat, and then, you know, the director goes on. And then when you're on set, the actor takes a frontal, you know, the sort of thing. But then you have to keep switching between the both, which uh, um, I kind of, I really did enjoy. Uh, I did. And um, um, the, the producer in me kind of takes a small dip on set <laughs> so I make sure that I have enough of backup watching everything because I can only manage the directing acting part once the shoot is over of course the producer had us back on and you know the actor takes a rest a little bit of rest and then the director and the producer gets to work but uh it's it's stage wise so I give importance as and when needed it's like having children so whenever one has a board exam the other one can just sit and watch tv <laughs> <laughs> that's the most interesting analogy I've ever heard. <laughs> you just you, you, you gotta prioritize, man. You just you figure it out. Yeah. Actually, you're a doctor. Um, yeah. What inspired you to move from medicine to films and filmmaking? I think I was always and have always been a performer and a storyteller. I just didn't know it. I've been, um, you know, involved in the arts and dance and drama from a very young age. I didn't know that films kind of per se existed. I mean, I knew films existed, don't get me wrong. I didn't, I didn't know about filmmaking. It's very, very naive of me to say things like this. I mean, we saw a lot of films, you know, every Sunday we would go out for a film, but it was like this magical world for me. I didn't know that there were people involved behind it. That's how naive I was. You know, all the women in my family are doctors. So I was like, okay, fine, I'm going to become a doctor, you know? And I love medicine, you know, it's, wasn't uh, you know I, I didn't dislike the profession I still don't mm -hmm. but once you get involved in things and when I started growing up a little bit more and I started getting these kind of opportunities and then when you notice that your heart and soul is just kind of really going towards that side then I don't think you have a choice you know it's like you have to choose between whether you want to be happy or not okay so you know with the kind of success that when the music changes has received mm -hmm. do you think that making your next film will be any easier I really hope so. Like, I really hope so. Like, so that's the thing about being in films, right? Like you're consistently unemployed, you know? You're always out of a job. So I'm just hoping that, you know, after this film, it's kind of impactful enough for me to be able to make much bigger and better and impactful things. You know, I'm very hopeful, you know? And if not, I'll still find a way. There's always a way. <laughs> so are there any ideas in the pipeline? Yes, yes. So there's this, um, well, it is it is COVID right now. So shooting is really kind of, you know, it's harder than before. Mm -hmm. But um, right now what I am doing is I've picked up these smaller projects to kind of keep me entertained at the moment. So I'm doing two music albums. One is um, in Tamar and Telugu. Another one would be in Tamar and Malayalam. And then um, I'm kind of simmering about um, for a, a Tamar project. It's kind of like, an anthology sort of scenario, but I'm not too sure as of yet. Again, it's COVID. So before I full throttle go into it, I have to think twice. But one thing that is solidly on the table is a, a Hollywood project of mine called About Him that is meant to be shot in New York. So that's what I have as my main. And this is, you know, I have my film in the film festivals. It's going to take a little bit of time before it's on an OTT platform, right? So in between, you know, I'm just, you know, having fun making smaller stuff entertaining stuff the next thing i mean the next music album that i have is a music video that i have is very lighthearted and very funny you know so right. yeah right so thank you so much for talking to us lakshmi thank you very much it was lovely <laughs> yeah thank you so much we are truthful unafraid and independent because of you now you can help our reporting from the ground go to the quint.com click become a member tab choose a plan and pay because the truth is worth it